Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all of my days. And when I think of your favor, I can't help but give you the praise. And Lord, you came into my life and you took away all of the strife. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. Good morning. And it shall follow me. Follow me. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. And it shall follow me. Follow me. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. Jesus is a great Savior. Of this you can be sure. All his works are marvelous and his word is ever pure. When you gave your only son, Lord, you gave your very best one. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. And it shall follow me. Follow me. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. And it shall follow me. Follow me. Surely goodness and mercy. Surely goodness and mercy. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. Come on now and follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Come on and follow me. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. Sing it with me, y'all. Come on and follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Come on and follow me. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. Good morning, everybody. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. And we'll dwell in the house of the Lord. What? Forever. Good morning, everybody. Brother Rick, your gracious host this morning. Welcome to the Wealth Station. And today we're going to be talking about who is a trustee and why trustees are the richest people in the world and what you have to do to become a trustee. And I have a couple of my friends, uh, trustees, um, that are coming on to be in my studio today. And I uh, look forward to uh, talking with uh, my good friend, Jackson Lucas, who should be here shortly. And um, let me make sure that I have anybody else trying to get in here. All right. So, Brother Jackson, you should be, should have it already, already sent. Let me let him know his invitation is already sent. Okay. All right. So, let's talk this morning about what it means to be a trustee and um, good trustees and bad trustees. Uh, when I say bad trustees, I mean you all, most of the world is not aware of, first of all, what a trustee is, what how a trustee operates. And also not aware of the fact that you are up under the authority of trustees as we speak. Unfortunately, you don't know what their roles are. And because you don't know what their roles are, you don't realize that you are being exploited by major multi-trillion dollar trustees. And you don't realize that you're being exploited by them because you don't know the law, which is why we have a financial IQ challenge once a month to inform you all about what's going on and how we became trustees and how now we control everything, but we don't own anything. All right. Are you listening to me? We control everything, but we don't own things anymore. Now, on our trustee, as far as our trust is concerned, our trust controls everything. It doesn't own anything. So our trust has no liability and it creates money faster than anything you're doing right now. If you ain't selling cocaine, <laughs> you're like, how do I know that, Rick? I know that because when we put money in the bank, we get 10 times back our bank deposits. Now, you name me one thing you're doing that makes money that fast. All right, I'm listening. Put it in a chat box. Show me what you're doing that makes money faster than 10 times your money. All right, 
Show me what you're doing. Put it in the chat box. Say, Brother Ricky, I got something that's faster than that trust y'all got. That thing is slow as y'all got. Well, show me what you got. All right. Yeah, hey, I'm a, I'm gonna I'm a wealth coach. All right. I will adjust quick if you show me something. Um, uh, what what you say, Brother Jackson? Yeah, come on into the studio, Brother Jackson. We're waiting on you. All right. Did you get your invitation? All right. I already sent it to you. So come in the studio. Queen Jackie, I sent you an invitation to. So come on the studio and we can talk. You all, you all can talk about your trust. So first of all, let me explain to you what a trust is. All right. Let me say hello to some of you all first. Though. Good morning, uh, Natalie. How are you? Good morning, uh, Lyrical Remedy. Simone, my good friend. How are you doing? Reeducated OG. Good morning to you. Um, good morning to you, Brother Booker. And con congratulations again to you, Brother Booker, on getting a VIP ticket, earning a VIP ticket to our Be Ready Summit in September. Good morning, God's infinite son. Good morning, Brother Jerry, King Jerry. I hope you have a wonderful day. Let me make sure I don't forget anybody that's here. All right, Sylvia, good morning to you, dear, from Canada. Glad to have you today. Good morning, Flip. I hope, I hope you're having a wonderful day, too, and thank you for speaking. Good morning to you, Lisa. God bless you. Lisa, I believe you're on the, you're on our way to our Get Ready, Be Ready Summit, too. Congratulations to you and your wonderful husband. Good morning, Verlin. We'll see you at the summit as well. Good morning, Keymaker, and good morning, Queen Deborah. How are you? And good morning, Get Money Group. Get, get Money Group. <laughs> That's a cold name, man. Hey, say those names that's going to make you a multimillionaire. Speak over your own life. By the way, I'll be waiting on somebody else to speak for you. I ain't waiting on nobody to speak for me. I speak over my own life. And if you if you want to agree with me, then good. If you don't, I agree with myself. <laughs> Get money grip. Good morning, Kelly. How are you, King Kelly? Good morning, uh, Paranoid Hearts Clothing. Paranoid Hearts Clothing. That's an interesting name for a company. You got my attention. Uh, good morning, uh, this is pretty rare. Good morning to you. And we see, um, good morning, Brother Harold. How are you? Good morning, Beverly. How are you doing, dear? And um, Bishop Derek, I hope you have that. Bishop Derek, good morning. Uh, good morning, Mr. Joe. And good morning, Tech Fire. And good morning, Brother Aaron. Okay, I believe that covers everybody. All right, you all, let's talk about being a trustee and what a trustee is. First of all, let me tell you, um, you have some good trustees, and the Bible shows these trustees. You have trustees like David. Because a trustee is a person that has a fiduciary responsibility for the benefit of the beneficiary. In other words, the trustee is the one that's in control of everything on behalf of the beneficiary, on the beneficiary, on the beneficiary, and the stakeholders involved. Okay, so let's take David for example. David is an amazing trustee because um, a lion comes to try to get a sheep, and then a bear comes to try to get a sheep. So he kills the lion and he kills the bear. Why? Because he's a trustee. He can be trusted with what? What's been entrusted to him. So a trustee is somebody that can be trusted with what? What's been entrusted to you. So we have um, what? Esther. She was an amazing trustee too. Why is that? Because she found out he was going to kill all the Jews and Esther was a Jew. So she what? She fasted and prayed and then she, then she told everybody else y'all fast and prayed too. And then she took some chances on her life and went in front of the king and stood in front of the gate of the king where she ain't had no appointment, all right? Because trustees, we don't wait for stuff to happen. We make stuff happen, all right? Now, you listen to me? Uh, okay. You say you came into the, on the link I sent you? Yeah, I sent it to you, Brother Jackson. It's not coming through? Want me to send you another invitation? I'll send you another one right now. Hold on, everybody. I'm going to send it to you again, Brother Jackson. Okay. And, and make sure you, and Brother Jackson, make sure you're looking at both of your mailboxes let me see which one i'm, I'm gonna send it to this one of you asked for a gl yeah action okay. that's what i'm sending to brother jackson i'm sending it to you now so you can come in and um tell everybody how you you know how you're living your life and how you're an amazing trustee now for your kids and your grandkids okay all right i'll send it to you again brother jackson so hopefully uh hopefully you got it now okay all right and uh okay so we have some good trustees like um, like like Esther, who saved an entire nation, like um, David, who saved his entire family. And you can do the same thing. All right. If you want to take and stop your family from having a trend of going year to year to year to year to year, all the way from slavery to now of having passing on um, more debt as opposed to passing on like resources and and uh, and wisdom and all of that then if you want to change that then all you have to do is become a trustee because trustees we run the world we make the most money in the world trustees do all right and there are trustees who have control over things that are happening in your life and my life right now 
and you're not aware of it, and I'm sure you why you're not aware of it, but first let me explain some of these trustees to you. All right, first of all, the bank director of a bank is a trustee. You say, what? That's right, the bank director of a bank is a trustee. Your way you put your money in every month, every or every week, or however your direct deposits go, that money goes directly into your bank. Your bank has a, a bank director. The bank director is a trustee. So a trustee is a person who has a fiduciary responsibility what, for the beneficiaries. I mean, in other words, they're supposed to set you up for life so that when you when you die, your kids are rich. When they die, their kids are rich. When they die, their kids are rich. That's what trustees do. All right. Good morning, Susan. How you doing? So I got a question for you. Have you ever met the director of your bank? Have you ever had a conversation with the director of your bank? Has your bank ever had a conversation with you? Have you ever been invited to a shareholders meeting with your bank? All right. You say, who is your bank? You say, Chase. Has Chase ever invited you to a shareholders meeting? You say, no, my bank is Wells Fargo. Has Wells Fargo ever invited you to a shareholders meeting? You say, my bank is Citibank. Has Citibank ever invited you to a shareholders meeting? You say, well, I ain't got a bank. I got a credit union. I got Navy Federal Credit Union. Has the director of Navy Federal Credit Union ever invited you to a shareholders meeting? All right. Okay, so my question is, have they ever done that? And the answer to that is a resounding what? No, you ain't never been invited. Why? Because you and me, we're not invited to the party. So that's why we have to become what? Our own trustees and create our own trust and um, and create our own wealth because we're not going to, those trustees don't work on our behalf. All right. They work on behalf of who? The shareholders. They work on behalf of who? The Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve is the one who owns all the banks around the United States anyway. Okay. And the Federal Reserve is not federal. The Federal Reserve is a foreign entity that owns um, the debt of the United States. It's part owner of the debt of the United States. So when you find out, so the trustees that operate the banks, they operate them for the benefit of the money that the Federal Reserve, amongst other shareholders, earn. So the strange thing about all of this is that the, the, the reason the banks got some money is why? Because you put your money in there. Why? And I put my money in there. So how did the bank ever get any money in the first place? Because the bank is extremely smart. What do they do? They said, we're going to wake up six days a week to do what? Borrow your money. All right. Then we're going to do what? We're going to turn around and pay you a little bit of interest on your money so that now you become the tail and we the head. So it's an amazing system. If you read my new book coming out now called um, Unmovable, Unstoppable, Unshakable, uh, Bible Principles That Guarantee You Financial Success, if you read my new book, I really got it broken down into my last chapter. My book is seven chapters long. I don't write real long books. And I don't write them real long because I want you all to read the book. You know, we got a serious problem reading. OK, a serious problem. I'm telling you, in our community, we have a serious problem with reading. And because of that, we are extremely naive and, and we are extremely exploitable. And we have money problems in our community. Why? Because we don't read. So when I write a book, it's never going to be a long book because I want you to read it. So as soon as you get it, you look at it and say, you know what? I can actually get through this book. I'm not going to just be sitting here with it staring, getting getting dust on it. I don't want my books getting getting dust on your shelf because that means you're going to live and you're going to die and you're going to die poor because you don't understand these rules. You don't understand these principles and you're not practicing these principles. You can become a multimillionaire just like I have because I'm from the hood just like you. OK, many sandwiches just like you. OK. $50 in a hotel room, just like you. And you say, Brother Ricky, you talk about that almost every day. I see it almost every day. Why? Because I'm not talking to y'all for y'all just to be listening to me. I'm talking to you so you can change your practices, so you can change what you do what? With your money, so you can change what you do what? With your time. Why? So you can dominate and so that you can spend your time doing what you want to spend your time doing. All right. Good morning, Latoya. How are you doing, dear? And good morning, uh, King David as well. So um, and good morning to you, Brother Willie. So, you know, like I say, where are you at? Where, where are you right now, Brother Rick? I'm just in a hotel down the street from uh, from Shantice's hospital. So what you do yesterday, Brother Ricky? I was in the hospital with Shantice all day and, uh, and Shantice as well. Who is Shantice? That's my daughter. So why? Because they were putting an incision in her neck to take some mass out of her neck because she has a thyroid issue because she, she deals with MS. So. Shantice ain't got nothing to worry about. Her bills are all paid for the whole month. Her bills are already paid for next month and all that. Why? Because she works with me. Why? Because I'm her trustee. I have a fiduciary responsibility to make sure that Shantice is okay. If she gets sick and she can never work another day in her life, she'll never have to worry about no money 
because she gonna she taken care of until the day she drops dead if she'll never work another day of her life that's your responsibility as a trustee and i'm telling you that me and Shantice, we ain't grew up with no money all right when shantice was born i was broke all right i had no money but what i'm telling you is that I just changed the way i started doing things when i found out better so when i learned better i started doing better uh, thank you brother david that's real kind of it. i appreciate you. all of us appreciate y'all praying because ain't nobody going nowhere that's why i've been telling the last two days we're talking about anybody going away by yourself and you need everybody's prayers in your life you need everybody coming to your life hey i believe brother jackson trying to make it to the studio now right on my brother let's let him on in hey good morning brother jackson let us know when you can hear oh man dang he must have hit the wrong button he got excited hit the wrong button knocked himself right back out of the studio <laughs> Uh, Antoine, uh, that's very kind of me. Thank you. I appreciate that. And God bless you. Good morning to you as well. So um, with Brother Jackson already has a trust like we do. And uh, sometimes people have a hard time getting in this stream yard studio thing. They just don't understand how to push these buttons. So be patient with them, okay? And if you got time to stick with us for this hour, then you're going to learn a whole lot. And if you decide you want to practice what we're doing, then you can, um, you can make some generational money and you don't have to be guessing about how to make money, okay? Um, all right, Brother Jackson, uh, <laughs> are you actually with us this time? Can you hear me? Yes, sir, I am. Can you hear? Can you hear me? Of course, we can hear that. We can hear that Mufa, Mufasa voice. Mufasa. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. I mean, King status this morning. Yes, that is King status. Good morning to you. <laughs> Good morning, King Rick. Good morning, sir. So let's get straight into our, our discussion today. First of all, you're operating. Currently, as a trustee, you have a you have a tax free trust that we created for you, and uh, your trust you don't have to pay any income taxes on anything that you do at your trust anymore. You also have uh, you also have the status now of being a sentient being, meaning that now you receive tax credits when you um, every time you make a deposit into your bank. So let's talk about the the, the responsibility of a trustee first of all, Brother Jackson. You, I understand that you're taking care of um, of uh, my niece there. I call her my niece, your daughter, because um, of course you and I have been friends for 30 years. So, um, you know what I really admire about you, Jackson, is I got most of my friends I've known over the last 30 years. None of them, hardly any of them, have a trust because most of my friends I know I don't even talk to them about business because most of the time they're not listening. So I want to I want to commend you that we can be personal friends and then you actually would pay attention to what we actually doing to make these millions. I'm impressed. I'm impressed with you because most people won't humble themselves to their friends, to the people that they actually know. I mean, really know, like in the way they treated Jesus, like his homies, they ain't pay him no attention. So I just want to commend you, first of all, for being humble enough to even, uh, you know, set yourself up the way that you set up because you set up big time now, you know, so I'm really, really happy for you. So let's talk about this first thing about being uh, the fiduciary responsibility of a trustee, and that's for the benefit of the beneficiaries. Let me ask you, why did you open up your trust? It seems to me like you're more concerned about your kids and your grandkids than you are about merely about yourself. And it looks like your aim is generational money and not just temporary money. How do you speak to that, Brother Jackson? Yes, good morning, everyone. And that is correct, King Rick. Um, I am very concerned with, uh, as it pertains to generational wealth. I didn't know anything about this uh, at all until um, you and I reacquainted ourselves and everything, and you started talking to me about a trust and how important it was. And I realized at that time uh, that I wish I had this information. I'm, I'm sure we both say the same thing. We wish we had this information 30, 40 years ago. Or so, because we'd be some bad mama jammers right now, but it's just the fact that we know now. So when you know better, you do better. So even though I'm 70 years old, I'm doing as much as I can. I, my days are numbered. So I don't know what that number is, but in the meantime, every day until that number comes, I'm going to be doing what I need to do in order to create generational wealth for my family so that they will know uh, they will know their grandfather, just like the uh, the John Pierpont Morgans, just like the, the Trumps. I mean, everybody are leaving legacies, um, the Rockefellers. You know, all of them, they, they all know all those children know their grandfather because he or she may have left a legacy for them. OK, and so I want to be the same way. I mean, I want to I want my grandchildren to know their grandfather and to know that I was the one that started the legacy that they're in right now at that point when they realize that that I am the one that helped them to be able to get that legacy 
by purchasing a common law trust at at some point and allowed myself to be able to create generational wealth for them that they will be recipients of. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So it sounds actually like you want to be you want to be on that picture that's on the wall, huh? You know that picture? Yeah, y'all ever see that picture on the wall? How to, and you all that's listening here on Instagram, uh, why don't y'all switch over to YouTube? Just Rick the Wealth Coach on YouTube. And just so you can see Jackson, don't y'all want to listen to the brother talking instead of just watching me? So, because uh, I'm not going to hold this phone, y'all. I used to hold a phone up and let everybody see, but y'all, y'all trying to kill me, right? <laughs> I ain't got the energy for all that. So if I was you all, I would switch over now so that you can listen to Brother Jackson talking. He's, he's telling you how he's living. And um, it's the easiest way for you to understand <clears throat> it's just, just listening to him talk directly. So, Brother Jackson, it sounds like he want to be that one. <laughs> Brother Willie said he want to be that one, too. I hear you, Brother Willie. Uh, Brother Jackson sounds like he's saying he want to be that one who, who pictures on the wall and when everybody walk by. That you, your eyes be following them and stuff, uh, and they, uh, they they walk to the right. Your eyes follow them to the right. Y'all know, like them, like in the mansions and the scary movies, you got to do the picture on the wall, right? That's the way trustees are. People don't realize who those pictures are. They pictures of trustees, people who left what trust fund, trust fund money. It's not yes, indeed. That's that's the picture that that's the picture they're gonna see on the wall on the wall right there. <laughs> that one. <laughs> It'll be on every wall. I mean, huge. Okay, this will be on the wall, so they'll know. That's my granddaddy there. <laughs> great, great, great granddaddy Jackson <laughs> That's right. That's gonna be that's the picture. That's beautiful. Already being already being made, so they can they can put it on there because I bet. It's it's that's, that's a that's a sweet flick there, bro. That looked like paper right there. That looked like money right there. <laughs> that, that's the one. I'm a little scraggly this morning, but, but that's gonna be the one. <laughs> now you all good. So let's talk about this for a second. Let's talk about um, how being a trustee frees our time up. I was just telling everybody that um, I'm here with my daughter, with Shantice, and thank you for praying for it too, bro. And uh, so, I mean, they literally, literally cut Shantice's throat yesterday to be able to get this mass out of her throat. All right. Wow. So it was, it was, it's just an incision, you know. And uh, but Shantice is so upbeat, got such a good attitude until, man, she just, you know, she just make you feel like, she just make you feel like if you are, if you complain about anything, you need your head examined. So, you know, I love because she's, uh, she's just like your own daughter. So, um, yes. so let me tell me this though. So you, you take care of your children now and you got a grandkid as a successor to your trust. So how's it feel? But you ain't got to do all this hard working for money. So let's talk for a few minutes about the trustees that's running all this money that's coming in and out of America. Let's talk about social security for a second. So the Social Security Fund right now has a $2.1 trillion surplus in it. That means they didn't collect so much money from Social Security tax from people. <coughs> you know, they got they got $2.1 trillion that they haven't even deployed. All right. So if you was going to be living off of your Social Security because you get Social Security now, right? Is that correct? Yes, sir, I do. All right. So you get Social Security now. But because you have a common law trust, excuse me, which is totally private and all the money and every time you make a bank deposit now you get back 10 times your bank deposits so it don't even bother your social security check and can you explain the fact to people that you know some people i, I tell them about how much money we make with these trusts and they're like man is that gonna mess with my benefits i'm like first of all that little itty bitty microscope check you get from the from the social security department because of social security our trustees that's a social security. The social security is a trust, in case you all don't realize that. All right. It's a trust, but it's trustees that you what? That you can't trust. Why? Because they partial out to you these little small amounts of money. They got a $2.1 trillion surplus right now. Why they sending out these little bitty checks? The average check for a person is $1,600 a month. And that's, I say the average check, but if you really want to talk about our community, the average check is probably, you know, pennies compared to that. But who in the world living off of sixteen hundred dollars a month? How in the world could I take care of Shanti's down here in the hospital and I'm making sixteen hundred dollars a month? I wouldn't even be here. You know, I'd be like, man, I ain't got time for that, baby. You uh, um, you know, I love you and all that sort of thing. We're gonna have to be praying for you. Why? Because I got a side job over here and a side job over there. I mean, who in the world can live off of sixteen hundred dollars a month? So we call it really social insecurity. It ain't so much security, but they're trustees. And then you just put your fate into the hands of a trustee who is not looking out for what, you know, if they don't have the fiduciary responsibility to you to make sure you got enough money to live off of. So can you talk about that for a second? All this money you're making off your trust, 
it don't even bother the fact that you, you get to keep your social security check too. Is that true or not? Can you talk to us about that? Yes, sir, it's very true. Um, and again, that, that money is on the statutory side, okay? Because it comes from the state, okay? I'm living on the common law side. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Okay, go ahead. I'm on the common law side. So one has nothing to do with the other at all. And the fact, even if it did, it wouldn't matter. It's just like um, a young lady that I that I coach, I won't say her name and everything. I told her that she needed to close some accounts that she had and everything. Uh, she had um, annuities. I told her, you need to close those annuities. I said, but I'm going to pay a penalty. I said, a penalty is nothing compared to what you're going to get. You're, you're, that penalty is, is pennies. It's not penalty, it's pennies, okay, in comparison with what you're going to get. So she did exactly what I told her to do. She closed it out. She had to pay the penalty and everything. But guess what? She's a millionaire now. So like I said, that penalty, it, it was pennies, not a penalty. It was pennies. That's it. All right. it was a penalty. But by doing that, it allowed her to be able to now be a millionaire. And it, as I said, that's the common law side. They're, they're two. They're, they're, they're separate. They're so hold on a second. Hold on a second, Jackson. Let me, let's make it very plain. Let's talk about numbers. So you have a, that's a good point you brought up. You got some of these little petty accounts that we all have because the bank, the director of the bank is a trustee, but they don't tell us what they really doing with the money. They just allow us to open up a CD a annuity or passbook bank account or some little frivolous stuff that we're going to die and the money ain't going to be worth nothing. All right. So that's the, so that's why that's not a good trustee because no. we can't, we can't trust that because only thing that we know about that is that we're going to die broke. That's all we know about because the money don't grow fast enough. At 1%, it takes 72 years for your money to double. At what? At 3%, it takes, what, 24 years for your money to double? You know? Yes, so it's just an outrageous amount of time for money to double. But 72 years? We're going to be real dead in 72 years. You're 70 and I'm 61. But I'd be 100. 72 years, I'd be 132. And what, in 70 years, you'd be 140. Ain't nobody living to no 132 and 140 no more. And that's just for one of your dollars to turn into two dollars. So that's a that's a ridiculous way to be living our life. OK, so we're yes, talking sir. today about being trustees and the fact that we can't we can't trust the bank. And we can't trust the, um, the way that that system is set up. But I want to make sure everybody understands what you're saying. So, you, for an example, you told one of your, one of your colleagues and uh, take a hundred thousand dollars out of these little poop but annuities that's taken earning three percent interest or whatever you're earning on that stuff and uh put it in your trust all right so that's a million dollar tax refund then after the irs take their money out you pay us and all that you still got four hundred thousand dollars left and you ain't even invest the money you just put it inside of the trust and there ain't even no investment risk involved because the trust creates the money based on tax <clears throat> risk, not based on investment risk so for all of you are listening one of the reasons why you don't understand what Jackson is saying right now is because you don't understand bartering. So trustees, we barter with the bank, but you all not, you all think that the bank, y'all just go to the bank and you just blindly trust the bank. You just blind, you, you don't even have a conversation with the banker about what's going on. I mean, you really, you never met the director of a bank. All right. And then if you if had ever met him, you wouldn't even know what questions to ask him. You didn't even realize he was a trustee because the, the director of the bank is supposed to be telling you what's going on with your money, but the, 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 tr the billions of people walking around the face of the earth never have a conversation with the with the director of the bank. We just first name Nye, last name E. So uh, just incredibly naive. You dig what I'm saying? And just got gullible written all over our forehead. And this stuff is costing us generational money because every time we put a dollar in the bank, they automatically get 10 times the amount of deposit that we put. It's called fractional reserve banking. But no, who, why in the world did you not get an explanation about fractional reserve banking when you went into the bank? All right. Why didn't any of us get an explanation about fractional reserve banking when we went into the bank? Why didn't the bank explain to us that, hey, we appreciate your <clears throat> we appreciate your deposit here and we're going to and we earn 10 times your deposit every time you make one. <clears throat> we appreciate that. All right. So nobody, none of you all have ever gone in a bank and the bank has sat down and told you, listen, we're going to get 10 times your deposit when you put some money in here. So we want to thank you so much for your deposit. Now, what they do is that they they accept your money and accept 10 times the deposits that you put in right off the top. They end up making about 400 percent on the average person's money. 
but they make 10 times right off the top just because you just made a deposit. That's automatic. That comes from the Federal Reserve automatically, immediately, as soon as you make a deposit. Okay? It's called fractional reserve banking. The bank can take, they can, they can leverage your money and get 10 times your money every time you make a deposit. So that means the bank has a fiduciary responsibility to make you aware of that. Good morning, Katrina. How you doing? Good morning, Bernadette. So, Brother, Brother Jackson, before you opened your trust, you wasn't getting 10 times nothing back when you put money in the bank because the bank ain't tell you nothing about the fact that that's what they do. They did not explain that to you. All right. They didn't say nothing about they have. a We have some rules you all call know your client rule that the banks have to follow. But you all don't know the rules. So the bank don't follow the know your client rules because why? They like you don't ask us for an explanation about nothing. So we ain't give you one. So, Brother Jackson, what do you think about that? You go into the bank. They don't explain nothing to you. And then they give you a sucker on the way out the door. Brother Jackson, why do you think they give us suckers on the way out the door? I like to hear your version of it. Go ahead. <laughs> it's very simple. You know, they, they, you know, how many licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Roll? You know, every time we walk in there, we just lick and lick and lick. There it is. It's just <laughs> over. You know, we suck as many we walk in there. That's where they greet us. Hi, how are you? So glad to have you here, sucker. <laughs> Come on in. You want to open up an account, sucker? Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. They, they they love to have us come in there and everything. I'm so, I'm so glad that you are here, being able to teach us the things that we don't know. Because, as I say, when you know better, you do better. For the most of us. I mean, unfortunately, there's still only one. There's only one percent of people living like we are right now and everything. And we are doing the best we can to increase that number from one percent to 2%, to 5%, to 10%. But it, it takes people to, to get out of their comfort zone and stop being comfortable and become uncomfortable and everything because it's, it's going to make you uncomfortable. But it's it's worth it. It's worth every bit of the uncomfortability. It's, it's taken me a few times <laughs> to get my trust open, but it's open now. Uh, I'm able to, everything I, I spend, everything I do, I do out of my trust. I spend all the money that I have is spent out of my trust. Everything goes in there. So I take things from the statutory side, <clears throat> from the business side, I write a check, you know, I make money from the statutory side. Let's get that clear, mm -hmm. okay? Then I turn around and I write a check to myself, to the trust, which is Jackson E. Lucas Jr. II Ministries Trust. I write a check to the trust for the money that I'm going to spend and I put in that little memo section, donation. So that that becomes tax deductible. So I donate it to the trust and I spend all the money and everything out of the trust. So hold it right there, Brother Jackson. Hold it right there. So you and your you and your partner, <laughs> Teresa, um, um, this, Teresa Rhea, our amazing school teacher who's part of our inner circle as well. You and your partner, Teresa, um, have an amazing testimonial. Uh, Teresa, she did what? So she went in and she, she got what a million dollar check this year from the tax credits that she got, <clears throat> excuse me, from depositing money into a trust. But on top of that, because she deposited, what, over $100,000 into a trust, all that was a tax write-off too. So she normally got she normally got a little bitty regular tax refund back on uh, from our regular taxes, from our 1040 taxes. She normally got a little bitty check, check back or, you know, or didn't get no money at all. So now she got back the biggest check she ever got back in her life on that side too because we're trustees. So because we're trustees with a tax-free trust, every dollar we put into the trust is a tax write-off. So for all you all who are listening, you say, I make $100,000 a year, Brother Ricky, and I you know, I don't have to get no tax refund back. Well, you can get all your money back now, <clears throat> excuse me, because you could take your $100,000 a year that you was earning, and you can, uh, if, if you had a trust like we do, and then you can make your deposit into, the, into your trust account. And that means that that $100,000 that you deposit, you just have your, you get, you. Listen, everybody listen. Normally when you get a check, you get direct deposit, right? So they just send it directly to. <clears throat> so as soon as they get your bank deposit, they automatically got 10 times what you deposited. I want y'all to understand why the banks are so rich. Because most of you, like 99% of you all got direct deposit into your banks. So that means that they directly get 10 times your deposit immediately. And you say, Ricky, why ain't I never had this conversation with nobody before? Because you have untrustworthy trustees. They're not going to tell you this. They're not going to have this conversation with you. Why should they? Why? Because they're building what? Yachts. All right. Brother Jackson, would you tell everybody who owns 
Cosar number one, Cosar number two, Cosar number three, Cosar number four, and the Titanic. Would you please tell the world who owns those yachts? Who you mean, John Pierpont Morgan? John Pierpont Morgan, J.P. Morgan. Yeah, what? J.P. Morgan. Chase. Chase. Come on, man. Yeah. They own they own yachts all over the world, including uh, they used to even loan a Titanic. Built these things from the ground up. What? With your direct deposits. That's what the money that comes directly from out your bank account and goes directly into them. And mm -hmm. then the people. And then Jackson. And this is what really bothers me when I'm talking to people. This bothers me for real. And I'm saying, listen, if I was you, and I wanted to get rich. Like we are. We're not talking about being rich. We're already rich. All right. We already got money. We already got money. If I die right now, Shantice, don't never have to work another day in our life. The kids don't never have to work. Nobody has to work. However, because we're trustees, we're teaching them what to do and we make them responsible <coughs> so that they, so that we don't leave them money. And they, 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 they got money and no information. So they have no way of being able to sustain what it is that we're doing. So but this is what bothers me, though, Brother Jackson. You just got to explain it how the banking system works and and uh, and, and how they buy all these yachts and how they live. <clears throat> and, you know, ain't nobody, nobody lives like a banker. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then we as individual people, we have a problem with borrowing money. We're like, man, I ain't going to be borrowing no money. I ain't stupid. I ain't no sucker. I ain't slow. I'm not going to be. I don't want to be in no debt. But look at the banks. Cosar 1, Cosar 2, Cosar 3, Cosar 4, all these yachts and everything that they buy, and they wake up every day for the sake of getting me and you to have direct deposits into their bank. Brother Jackson, what do you say to the person that's listening to us right now who thinks borrowing money is dumb? What do you say to that person when the banks, the richest people in the world, borrow money six days a week? Brother, is common sense common or what? Talk to me. Well, again, uh, King Rick, it's, it's, as I said, when you, you know, if you don't know, you know, it, it's, it's just fake. You don't know. But we were taught, you know, most of us our age, you know, were taught don't create debt. You pay off debt. You get rid of debt. Don't don't have debt. You, you know, make sure you have your car. You know, make sure you own your home. Make sure you own your car. Make sure you have a business. Make sure you don't have any debt. I mean, these are the things that we were taught. My mother taught me these things. But. This is that now that I know this is the 21st century. Those things have changed now. I need as much debt as I can get. I, I need I think I need to, 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 to borrow everything. OK, and, but, but the key to that is not not just borrowing everything and whatnot. The real key is the fact that besides borrowing and getting into debt and things along that line, I don't have to worry about anybody coming after me because I got too much debt. None whatsoever. I don't own my car. I don't own my home. I don't own anything my mother taught me, unfortunately. Bless your heart, mom. I don't do a dog thing. Well. Mom taught me. No, she meant well. Yeah, she meant well. Mother, I love her. I love her. Okay, I love her. I go see her all the time and visit her at a grave and everything. I go visit her regularly and things along the line. But she understands now and appreciates the fact that now I do have to have debt. I don't own these things that, that she said I need to own. She understands that and everything now. Even though I don't, as I say, I don't own my car, don't own my home, don't own my dreams. All of that stuff is in my trust. Okay, my trust owns everything, but guess what? I control. There it is. Everything. That's the word. I sure. control. Hold everything. it right there. Hold it right there, brother Jackson, because we got a couple of questions. So let's answer a couple of questions. Oh yes, sir. All right. So we have um, Queen Katarina asking some question. I believe the question is, what do you, what if you have a mortgage? How does that affect your trust? So Queen Katarina, first of all, let me explain something to you. Let us explain something to you about your mortgage. First of all, your mortgage is a fictitious document. OK, it's not even real. And Katarina, when you read your mortgage, um, if you're at home and you have it, pull it out so you can read it. And two things you'll notice, <laughs> you'll notice that it has you as a tenant on your mortgage, meaning that you don't own your house in the first place. You're just renting it until your very last mortgage payment is paid. And not only that they not only is that buying a house is the worst investment in the world to buy a house for an investment, because all of us that's got money, we understand that houses are meant for one thing to be lived in. They're not an investment. Why? Because you pay you put one hundred thousand dollars down for the house, but they charged you three hundred thousand dollars to buy it. Anybody with common sense can understand that. Why in the world would I pay three times what it costs for something if it was a better way of doing business? So 
they, they charge you uh, amateurized interest, meaning that it's the biggest pimping game in the world because you, you only signed up for $100,000, but they charged you $300,000 for the house. Then, Katarina, you, um, your home is, you don't own a home as long as you have a mortgage because you're, an, you're a tenant, okay? Which means that you're a slave to a mortgage. That's what a tenant means. I know this is not the way you all been taught. You've been taught own everything you can. And you've been taught the first thing you ought to own is a house. Well, I'm telling you all that that's some nonsense. And you got, and we're going to go into the second thing. And I'm going to teach you, I'm going to teach you um, about what's going on in the second phase about this whole idea of um, the school system and how you got taught what it is that you've been mm -hmm. taught. <laughs> we're teaching you how this real money is made. Okay? <clears throat> real money is made. It's not made like that. However, and I have a mortgage. I have a house that has a mortgage on it, but I'm not naive. I, I took, it's not an investment, all right? It's just a place I live at. And because I operate out of a trust, it doesn't matter because uh, everything that I put in my bank account this year, I get 10 times the money back anyway. So my little house note doesn't even mean anything to me. It doesn't matter to me about the fact that they gouge on me on, a, on the backside. It doesn't even mean it. It's, it, it's insignificant. Are you listening to me? So, um, and the second thing that you'll notice about your mortgage, Katarina, is that, you, that your mortgage is not signed by the bank. Your mortgage is signed by you, but your mortgage doesn't have a signature from the bank. The reason that the bank didn't sign your mortgage is because when you went in and applied for the mortgage, the bank didn't give you the money. The money came from the Federal Reserve and they got the, and the reason that the Federal Reserve gave you the money is that because you were credit worthy. So your credit created a note from the Federal Reserve, which is why your mortgage is called a mortgage note because it didn't come from the bank. It came from the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve gave the bank credit for your mortgage. But they didn't give them a hundred thousand dollar credit for your hundred thousand you borrowed. They gave them a three hundred thousand dollar credit for the hundred thousand dollars that you borrowed, and that's why they got suckers sitting in the front of the room when you come in to the bank because the the moves that they making build what some more skyscrapers build what some more um some more um yachts and build what and it's based on naivety first name Nye, last name Eve and until you come and get trained <coughs> on how this real money is made and how to live a private life and how to get tax credits, you ain't gonna never have no real money, all right? Y'all playing small ball with this money that y'all dealing with. The biggest tax refund we didn't give out is $70 million, not, not $70,000. And most of y'all, if you got a $70,000 tax refund, you'd be like ecstatic. So this is the big leagues. This We're not playing games over here. And the way that you learn what, so another gentleman asked me a question, said, how do I learn what I need to learn? So. Um, Antonio, um, write this down, myfinancialiqchallenge.com, myfinancialiqchallenge.com. That's how you learn from us. Because Antonio, people call me all the time saying, Brother Ricky, I heard you talking and i like to have an appointment with you. I say, well, that's $50,000 an hour. They say, that's a lot of money. I say, it's a lot of money to you because of what you do with your time. I don't waste my time. All right. So if if you, I can, if I can come up from being homeless and having fifty dollars, then anybody can make money in America or anywhere around the world, for that matter, as long as you get educated and then execute what it was that you got educated on. So we're trustees. We don't live a little beggarly life, all right. We live the life of the one percent town, and anybody can do it because I'm straight up from the hood. So anybody can do it. This ain't got nothing to do with privilege or you getting a silver spoon or any of that. It's got something to do with you learning information and then executing. All right. So Antonio, myfinancialiqchallenge.com. That's where you come, my king, and that's where you learn what's going on. Um, and the next one starts um, this Monday coming up. So you got good training if you'd like to come out and get trained. Myfinancialiqchallenge.com as we train, as we record here live today. Um, the next one will be Monday, and that'll be um, June the 20, uh, no, I'm sorry, July the 3rd. Okay. Uh, Monday coming up, yeah, July the 3rd. Is that correct? Monday coming up, this July the 3rd. Yeah, July the 3rd, might be coming up. All right, so we look forward to seeing you. All right, let's talk about, Brother Jackson, let's talk about the school system uh, as we talk about trustees. Because the school system of trustees, why? Because we trust our kids to go to school and we trust our own educations, what? From schools. So let's talk about that for a second. So we realized that the whole public, the, the, part, the Board of Education was created by John D. Rockefeller and Henry Ford. So why did they do that, Brother Jackson? They did that because they said, listen, if people go to school and they find out what we're doing, because we operate out of trust, if they find out what we're doing, then the, the wealth will be shifted to the average person. And we don't want that. 
So we're having board meetings right now to discuss how to keep the average person what in the dark. He says, so let's do what? Let's create a school system called the Board of Education. All right. He said, we're going to, to create the school system. So what? So it can be a divergent to what's really going on. So that way, when people win, they still lose. They still at the top of the bottom. They still the best of the worst. They still the winner of the losers. Why? Because they don't even understand that there's a side of life where tax credits are created. And you don't even have to work for the money. The money just works for it. It just, it just builds its own money and it creates its own wealth. So they thinking they got everybody thinking you got to work real hard to get wealthy. Well, I stopped by to tell all of you all listening to me today. You can work real hard. You ain't going to get wealthy. You're just going to get tired. All right. Just going to be more tired because you're doing more work. Now, are we saying you're not supposed to work? No, we're not saying are we saying you're supposed to be lazy. No, we're not saying that. But we are saying that no matter how hard you work, if you're driving a tricycle, it's still going to take you forever to get from Chicago to California on a tricycle. Are you digging what I'm saying, Brother Jackson? Are you picking up on a putting down? So we got people on a tricycle, on a financial tricycle, trying to get from Chicago, where you and I are from, where you reside right now, trying to get from Chicago to California on a tricycle. And they think just because they pump their legs harder, they're going to get there faster. No, it's still going to take you a lifetime to get there. And by the time you get there, you still ain't won nothing. Why? Because you ain't got no energy left to do nothing else. Because all your time is taking up what? Trying to make some money. And that takes so long. It is such a ridiculous way to live. But it's the way that they've been taught. We've been taught how to live what? Through these child concentration camps they call what? Schools. So, Brother Jackson, as you just mentioned, you're 70 years old. You just, um, over these last 21 financial IQ challenges, you've been learning. What's the difference between the education you've gotten the last 21 months and the last 21 challenges and the education you had gotten for 68 years prior? Can you speak on that? I most certainly can. Um, it took me quite a while, um, you know, being in the school system. I mean, I have a degree, but, you know, uh, I only have a bachelor's degree. So in the time that I have spent in the financial IQ challenges, I now have a master's degree in common law because I understand what's going on, how I should live, what should be done, what I should be doing. And I'm doing those things now. I'm, I'm, I'm following I'm following the path that I should have been taught and we all should have been taught a long time ago. But again, all they did was teach us how not to learn what we need to learn. And I'm, I am so grateful to you. And, and as I tell people, and for those of you that don't know, you know, we, we in biblical days, we had our disciples and everything, our 12 disciples that went out and taught <coughs> what to be done and everything with the Lord's word. OK, and thank God in the 21st century, we have our 13th disciple that is teaching us the things that we need to know. OK, God's word is in the Bible. I mean, you, all you have to do is just come to the financial IQ challenges, come to these uh, these studios that uh, that Rick has and that he does all the time and learn from God's 13th disciple. He may have some other disciples out here. I don't know about them, but I know about this one for real, for real. OK, and he is the real deal. I love him uh, and I, I'm so glad he 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 does so much in trying to teach us. Now, you can go out here and do what you want to do and everything. OK, uh, but it, it's up to you. OK, you have to do what's best for you. But what we're doing is trying to teach you what you need to know so that you can do better. And as you said, when you know better, you do better. That should be the case all the way around. But it's not. Sometimes you know better, but you're just not going to change. OK, you sit around here and you, and you have this big circle with the line through it called around to it. It's like, <laughs> I'll, I'll get around to it in a minute. OK, I'll, I'll get around to it tomorrow. Hold it right. Hold it right to it, Brother Jackson. That, that reminds me that uh, we might as well make this announcement now that we do have a Be Ready Summit coming up in September, <clears throat> September the 25th and the 26th. I just got off the phone with Tim Brown from the Oakland Raiders, and we're uh, trying to set him up to come in and talk on the 26th. And uh, he's doing a podcast with um, he's doing a podcast um, in Las Vegas for the Oakland Raiders, for the Las Vegas Raiders. He does that. on. He's about to start doing a podcast on Mondays, so he won't be accessible that Monday. But we believe he'll be accessible that Tuesday. So our education is everything, Brother Jackson. I appreciate it. Thank you for your kind words, too. But our education is everything, you all. And the reason that we do what we do is because of the way we've been trained, you know, and, and Brother Jackson, as you mentioned, 68 years of being trained through the school system and the school system was set up by Rockefeller and set up by Henry Ford 
so that we would not know what they're doing. You know, they said, listen, let, let's, let them get taught a whole bunch of irrelevant stuff that ain't got nothing to do with this real money. Let them get taught how to work real hard, compete with each other. So, <clears throat> Brother Jackson, what do you say about this idea with trustees? We understand something that's very important in the <clears throat> financial environment, very important in life, period. But this is how the real money is made. It's made through collaboration. And what we notice about the school system is that the school system has chairs set up in rows. And what happens if you say something to somebody, they call you a cheater, right? They call you, they call you low down, right? They say, they say, what? They say, you, you trying to get in my pocket, right? They say you, they send you to the principal, right? And then they, they call you dishonest, right? They put a dunce, a, you remember them dunce hats they used to put on people? Remember that brother Jackson? Put a yes, dunce, sir. put a dunce hat, <laughs> on, a dunce hat on your head and sit you in the corner. And, and act like Fred Sampson on, <laughs> on a, what was that, what was that, Fred Sampson, what was, that, what was the name of the show with Fred Sampson? I mean, uh, with, uh, you know, with Red Fox, what was the name of the show? Yeah. And we always call him his son, you big dummy. What was the name of the show? <laughs> so, yeah, Sampson and son. So, yeah, Fred Sampson, yeah, Sampson. Yeah, Sampson, yeah, Sampson. Yeah, Sampson. <laughs> you big dummy, he always called him a modern big dummy. And uh, <laughs> so they got him sitting on the side, Brother Jackson, acting like if you, if you don't, if y'all collaborate with each other, you're cheating. And I want all y'all listeners to understand this. The reason that you've been taught this slave mentality through the school system is because it creates slaves. What? Economic slaves. And I'm talking to all of you all. Right? And it got to do with whether you're black or white or red. It's got everything to do with the fact that you have been programmed and trained to not communicate with each other, but to compete with one another. And competition is for poor, broke folk. Competition is a damnable doctrine. Competition is a curse. Competition is not how God works. God works through what? Collaboration. <clears throat> so we trust a system that taught us what? How to be, how to fight with one another. All right. And that's by design. That ain't no joke. All right. We got a system that taught us how to fight with each other. And uh, as opposed to us trusting the word of God, which teaches us what? How to collaborate with one another. That's why we teach the Bible so much. For you all who wonder, why do we teach the Bible so much? Because it's the best book in the world and it teaches amazing posterity. What is posterity? It's way more than prosperity. Prosperity means you got a couple of little dollars now. Posterity means your grandkids are born rich. All right. And that's based on what? Collaboration. So let's talk about that for a second, Brother Jackson. What do you think about how the school system is set up in roles and the fact that they got people competing with each other <laughs> instead of in, in our environment as the posterity practices with our private Facebook group and what we do? You know, with one another in the way that we got our own banks now and how we do business with each other and everything. How how have you adopted to our community and how does that make you feel to be a part of something like that? You know, it's, the, the feeling is indescribable. It's 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 indescribable. I love the way that I live now. I, I feel so free before I, I was I was always wondering what is going to happen. What am I doing? You know, what's what's going on? You know why is it taking me so long to, to for all this for the things to happen that that are, that are happening and they're happening so slow well now that i'm on the common law side things are happening quickly now real quickly so you know i, I feel a lot better by myself uh as i said I, I i know that i'm gonna have a transition my days are numbered i don't know what that number looks like and everything but every single day of my life i live it to the fullest okay and doing whatever i can do in order to try to help leave a legacy for my family and let them understand that, you know, it's, it's going to school is okay, but you get your real schooling from your grandfather. Okay. I'm the one that's going to suggest really trying to school you now. Okay. And what I know, <clears throat> once you know what I know, you, you know, you, you'll be, you'll be phenomenal because you'll now be able to go out here and live the way you should live rather than the way that the statutory side tells you, you should live. And you and, and that shouldn't be okay. So I'm just so I'm I'm so educated now. I've I've, I've got a double masters. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I, I used to tell people that I got I got a bachelor's of education in business and I got a a master's in street education. Come on. But now that 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 master's in street now has has doubled to a double master's. Now, another level. Okay? In common, yeah, it's a whole nother level now mm -hmm. in common law. And once you know that law, that is the law of the Bible. That's the law of the land. That's the constitutional law. The laws that were created long before we were even thought about and everything by our forefathers, you know, 
and we live by the Constitution, okay, and should be living by the Constitution. And common law create has created that and says this is the way you live. So this is how I live now. I don't live the statutory side. I operate <clears throat> on the statutory side, but I live on the common law side, if that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Okay, I right, operate right. on the statutory side, but I live on, on the common, common law side. So and one thing is just said, we're about to wrap up. <clears throat> Listen, everybody, I'm talking to my good friend, Jackson Lucas. He's a member of our inner circle, a member of what we call our posterity practices group. We're a private group. And it's part of what you learn when you come through our financial IQ challenge. And as I just mentioned, mentioned to Antonio, if you all are interested in learning what we do, then you just register at myfinancialiqchallenge.com. And as we speak today live, our next um, our next challenge begins next week, Monday, uh, starting Monday. It'll be all next week, uh, July the 3rd through July the 7th, for you all who are listening right now or who might be listening to this recording in the very near future. Brother Jackson, before we go, I just want to say uh, that what I've noticed about you is that you are passing, as you just mentioned, you're passing your wisdom to your daughters and your grand and your granddaughter, and that you have a granddaughter that's a successor to what it is that you're doing. I like us to end by talking about trustees that we are educators. You know that our job is trust. Part of our job as a trustee is that we're not doing this for us. We're doing this so that we can teach the next generation what's going on because we know we're not going to be on the scene and we're not selfish. We're not childish. We're grown men and women. And we understand that our mortality is at stake and I, we get our joy out of teaching the kids. That's what we get. Our, um, my joy is that I'm down here with Shantish right now and teaching her and then teaching little joy, nine years old, nine years old. And the thing that joy is about, by the way, all of you all, you, you're going to meet my grandson when you come to our be ready summit, because he's going to be one of the speakers. He's nine years old. <laughs> He's going to be one of the speakers. And it ain't, it ain't going to be no little kiddie speech either. He's a bad man, all right? Why? Because we're training them. We're training them. We're not letting the school system train them. We train them. We let them know that this is real life, brother. Real life, the real law is what? The Bible law. That's the real, that's the Bible is the law of the land, all right? Public law too. What, what is it, Brother Jackson? Public law. Don't give it to him. Make him come to class. Don't give it to him. Make him come to class. Y'all come to class. We'll teach y'all the public law that states that the Bible is the law of the land. And then you'll understand why we're able to make these big <laughs> checks that we make. You'll understand it. we're not guessing. It's not luck. It ain't no happenstance. We not we know how this money is being made. And that's the way that we're practicing our lives now. And uh, and we're collaborating and making sure our kids know. So, Brother Jackson, before we leave, can you talk a little bit about the freedom that you have now of knowing that your family is they have the information that they need and not just uh, uh, not. No, it's not. It's not 7310. God's infinite son. It's not 7310. You got to come to class for that. <laughs> oh, key maker. Gonna put it in a key maker. Stop cheating. Public law 97 280. Why are you going to cheat like that? Key maker. You've been to class before. Key maker must have been to class. Wait, are they, are they reading on their own? I ain't mad at you. That's good. That's good. So it's, the public law states that. Uh, common law is the law of the land. So for all of you all who are thinking, man, Brother Ricky, them checks y'all getting that stuff ain't even legal and all of that. Look, just carry your little scary behind on because you don't read. All right. And I don't have no respect for people who don't read. I let them know you're a coward. <clears throat> you guessing about what's going on. You're not certain about nothing. You don't speak with no authority. Why? Because you don't walk according to the word of God. And you and you're a little sissy. All right. So carry the little sissy stuff on. While we make these millions, you just go ahead on and do whatever you was doing. Just don't come over here meddling, all right? So I, I got a lot of respect for you, brother, because you are a very humble man. You read, you study, you pay attention. Uh, what's that, brother Wright? He said, can I do this work for the U.K.? Oh, yeah, you certainly can, brother Wright. We asked somebody who was asking about the U.K. Brother Wright, let me explain something to you all real quick. We're going <coughs> to take Jackson here mind. Let's take about two or three extra minutes. <coughs> brother Wright, what we're doing is that we have common law trusts, which means they operate clear across the entire world because the IRS is not a United States company. The IRS is, is headquartered in Puerto Rico and headquartered in the Philippines. It's not even a it's not even a national company. They got offices here in the United States, but it's an international business. It's not a United States entity. It's not a United States government arm. All right. That's not what the IRS is. They're they're 
a commercial company just like everybody else with an EIN number just like every other company in the world. They collect tax credits for people clear across the world, not just here in the United States. All right. They put tax. What's that, Katarina? Can you put the link in? Uh, if somebody, if one of you all, y'all want to bless Katarina, y'all want to put in my financial IQ channel because <laughs> I'm not typing any stuff, baby. But if one of y'all want to help, one of you all listening, one of you all that's part of what we do, if you want to help um, Booker or Katrina or Girl Ann, one of you all, if you want to put in the comments section here, <clears throat> you can put myfinancialIQchallenge.com so you can help out Sister Katarina. She's trying to find out what we're doing. All right, so if one of you all want to help, That'd be kind. We appreciate that. But it's myfinancialiqchallenge.com, Katarina. That's how you that's how you learn. It's in my bio to <clears throat> on uh, Instagram. OK, so if you go to Instagram, you look up Rick, the wealth coach, you can see all of that stuff is in my bio. So, Brother Jackson, as we conclude today, um, um, how does it feel to know that your daughters and your grandkids actually know what's going on? And I, it appears that you've made it a prerequisite for them. I've seen them in the financial IQ challenges. That's when I get excited. <clears throat> when I see you <clears throat> and I see your stuff set up right. But then I see that you got people that, that absolutely that you made it a prerequisite for them so that they can be able to to know what it is that you're doing so that your legacy won't just die and just won't just come to a <clears throat> grinding halt. And then all this foolishness all over again, who knows, for the next hundred or 200 to 300 to 400 to 500 years brother what kind of freedom is that giving you how does that make you feel because it makes me feel great to be down here with shanties talk to us about that before we go it is so phenomenal king rick um <clears throat> i just got off the phone with my uh my granddaughter a little while ago uh we talked regularly i saw her yesterday she came and brought me a salad and everything and you know uh, it's just phenomenal because she, my granddaughter i have seven girls two boys one deceased and out of all of my children, I have a, a bunch of grandchildren, I have maybe 22 grandchildren and so on and so forth. So I have a lot of family, but I picked one young lady, my granddaughter, Nafisa, to be my co-trustee. So she has the same authority that I do on this trust and everything. And I trust her to make sure that things are done that I want to have done. So she understands clearly, she's been on the financial IQ challenge uh, three, maybe four times or so. Okay. Her mom has been on even more than that. So, <clears throat> you know, she understands her responsibility. She knows what she needs to do and everything. And mm -hmm. she knows that once I have transitioned, she's going to, and especially after we just had a conversation with everyone uh, this past Monday, we just had a conversation with a millionaire who told us exactly what we need to do regarding trustees and things along that line and what to do what I trust. Hi, Queen. Uh, that Queen Shantae, I just saw her walk by. Tell her, good morning, please. Um, she, said, she said hi to you. Okay. And um, I told her that her responsibility once I transition is to make sure that the, uh, that the trust is closed, to turn around and make sure that the beneficiary is taken care of, and then to go back in and create minutes and reopen the trust back up so that she can continue using it and start building her legacy and stuff. So we know how to do the proper things now. I didn't know this. So now I knew from just being a part of this. Now I know how to operate. OK. And the fact that when I did go to the bank and opened up my trust, you taught me and told me exactly what to do. I went in there and opened up a non-interest bearing account. So normally when you have an interest bearing account, I become I'm winding up being a debtor and the bank is the lender. But when I go in there and create the fact that now I, I want this, I do not want any interest in there. I want a non-interest bearing account. Now I become a lender and the bank becomes a debtor now. So I just flip the script and everything on them. They don't know what's happening. Okay. They, they, they don't know. They don't know what the heck is happening, but I know what's happening because of your teaching and the things that you've taught. And I'm, as I say, I'm, I'm just so wonderfully blessed to be in your company to share. And thank you so much for allowing me the honor of being able to come on here and spend this time with you and talk to your people and everything about what they need to do. And if you don't have Rick's book, get it, control everything, own nothing. You don't want to own anything. Like I can tell you, I don't even own my dreams anymore. They're all in the trust. Everything I got is in my trust. And it's, and it's good because I control it. So I, I control all these things, even though I don't own them. So it's just a phenomenal way to live. And if you're not there, you know, trust and believe. Learn how to get on the other side of money like we are, okay? 
Don't work for money. Let money work for you as we do. I relinquish the mic, sir. Man, you're hilarious, man. You say you don't you know, all your dreams no more. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> so for you all who are interested in reading our, our book, that's the ebook. I just put it there, ebook.myfinancialiqchallenge.com. So y'all can copy that link if you're interested in that. Uh, all right, Brother Jackson, let's pray for everybody, man. That uh, the God bless everybody. That our lineages won't stop, won't be no one generational thing. That it'll be a generational after generational after generational thing. Let's pray for everybody. That everybody have the courage to be able to do the things that we need to do. All right? All right, so let's go. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today for Brother Jackson Lucas. What an amazing man. What an amazing prince, king among men, Lord. Thank you for his beautiful attitude, his wonderful disposition. Thank you, Lord, for his kindness. Thank you, Lord, for his um, for his willingness to share his life with us, Lord, and how he's living tax-free now and how he's getting these tax credits and how he's teaching his kids and his grandkids, Lord, to have generational money, not just some little temporary money. But, Lord, we thank you for his vision for his family. And, Lord, we see great things happening in this family. Bless this family throughout ceaseless generations. Brother Jackson, I bless you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You shall continue to live and not die. Your legacy shall live on and never die. I speak into your life mounds and mounds and mounds and mounds of unspendable posterity in your life because of the fact that you have a humble spirit, because you have answered the clarion call. I speak into your life the blessing of God, the uncomprehension, the inexplicable, unexplainable blessing of God in your life over your health, over your strength, over your mind, over your generous heart. May the Lord bless you in the city. May he bless you in the field. May he bless you when you wake up in the morning and when you go to bed at night. And when your enemies come at you one way, may they have to flee seven ways. May he give you the amazing count, the, the amazing culture and content and accountness of God in your life. May you be calm, cool, have a blood pressure that's 110 over 87. May your health be booming and banging. Lord, may your mind be sharp and crisp and may your influence have infinite, infinite, infinite impact on this generation and the generations to come. And may the Lord bless you to put that handsome picture you showed us up on the wall so that everybody knows that you are the progenitor and the, and the trendsetter and the person who reversed the curse in your family. I speak these things into your life, my friend. They cannot be reversed because they are written in blood. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Amen. And last but not least, I'm going to leave them with this little tidbit. If you want to, one, one last thing, y'all. I'm, 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 like we said, we don't, we're not going to give away everything, but we got one last thing. That's oh, why you got to show off? You got just got to show off before you go, bro. That's my tax bill. <laughs> I didn't pay it. Most, first and second installment are paid. I didn't pay it. The trust didn't pay it. The trust is tax exempt. Mm -hmm. You can't pay it. Mm -hmm. I don't own it anymore, so I didn't pay it. Mm -hmm. So I'm yeah. telling you, you Come to the financial IQ challenge. You want to learn these things because I got an instant raise. I don't even I don't pay taxes anymore. You know, <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you said I'm looking for a miracle. You ain't even got to look for a miracle no more. Mm -hmm. Every time you every time Done. you get your tax bill is paid. Hey, I'm Done. proud of you, brother. I'm, I'm very proud of you. I, I count you a dear friend. And thank you so much for stopping by with us today. All right, everybody be blessed. If you all will continue to pray for um Shantice, I pray I appreciate that. We're about to go back. And check on her. She yes. was in. Um, she was in. Uh, naturally, she was in some pain. And let me explain to everybody this. Listen to me, real good, you all. Uh, for God's infinite son, that's his tax bill. Then now you got everybody all stirred up, Jackson. I got to explain some more stuff. All right. God's infinite son. That's Jackson's tax bill for his house. He has a house that's owned free and clear. So he put his house into the trust. So when he put his house into the trust, it became a tax-free house. He doesn't pay any property taxes anymore for the rest of his life. His family never has to pay taxes. Every single time he gets a, a property tax bill, it just comes back to him paid. All right. Okay, that's what that was. That was that's what that's all about. All right. So uh Jackson, why are you doing this, man? I told you I gotta go. So my bad, I'm sorry. So, uh, so <laughs> but I do want you all, everybody listening, please continue to pray for Shanti's because um, they did literally cut a put an incision in her throat yesterday and they took a mask from out of her thyroid. She's got such a good attitude until we was laughing when I left the hospital. All right. We, I was laughing when we left the hospital. She was laughing too. They, but this is what I want you all to understand. <clears throat> Trustees, this is what's going to happen with you all. Listen to me good. When you start operating like this, should you decide that's what you all want to do? And for all of you all who have trust like we do, God bless you. Because this is what's happening. 
We make so much money with our tax checks until we don't even have to work. So that means what? That means that we can take the time to go do what we really supposed to be doing. So I can actually be down here doing what it is that I'm doing. All right. And immediately when Shantice came out of surgery, immediately the first thing that we did was um, naturally I, I just sat there and sang to her because she loved to hear my singing and stuff. Because I was singing to her the day she was born. Matter of fact, I was singing to her, Brother Jackson, the song I sang to her the day she was born. All right. <laughs> when she was born, I said, I sang the song called You Are My First Time Love. So we're in the hospital and she's sitting there and she and she's still thinking she's still thinking she's a little baby, right? So we're having a good time. But she was in some pain. So I asked the lady, I said, So what's going on here? I said, um, what 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 can you do for this immediate pain that she's having? So Shantice naturally can't, she couldn't talk. She could whisper a little bit, but she couldn't talk. So I said, um, do you have some morphine? So the lady said, well, she gets this narco drug. I said, yeah, but that's oral, correct? She said, yes. I said, so she can't swallow it. So she's like, no, she, she can't really swallow that. I said, yeah, so what can you do for her now while she's in pain now? Listen to me, you all. Get y'all money right, okay? So that when you got to be where you got to be, you can be there because you can't tell these nurses what to do for your loved ones if you ain't in the room. Are you listening to me? Because you don't have time to be in the room because you have some eight, nine, ten, twelve dollar, twin hour, ten dollar, uh, twelve hour job, wasting all this time. And people need you when they need you. They don't need you later. Okay, they need you while they're going through it. They're going through. They don't need you to be calling in on the phone talking about you. Okay, baby, you can't tell no nurses what to do while you calling in on the phone, and they will play your loved ones off. They'll be sitting there. They're not in pain. So your loved one can be sitting in pain and they're not in pain. So they, it don't mean to them what it mean to you. You feel your loved one's pain. Every time she grimaced, I grimaced, you know, because I could feel that thing. Are you digging what I'm saying? And y'all feel it too. So free y'all time up so that you have the time to be able to spend with your quality time to be able to spend with your family so that you can be there when they need you, not later, not after the fact. Are you listening to me? So that way I was able to help regulate able to help regulate what they were doing with Shanti's. They sped up the processes. They gave her what she needed. And by the time I left, we were laughing. She was grimacing in serious pain. She said she felt like she had a knife in her throat. All right. And she had to write down everything because she couldn't say it. He said, why are you talking about your family and being so graphic, Brother Ricky? Listen, I come on here once a day to talk to y'all. The reason I come on here is so that you can live so that you can have a practical way of doing what it is that you're supposed to be doing. All this churchy stuff, all this I see in heaven stuff, we on earth, we're not in heaven, all right? The kingdom of heaven is here. So that means whatever you're gonna do, baby, get to doing it and get to doing it right now, right away. Stop wasting time, okay? You ain't got, you don't know much time like, like Brother Jackson. That's why I love you, that's why we're friends. Because you got a, a an alert mind about the fact that you uh, infinite, that you are a person that's, that's um, temporarily around here. So you handling your business now. So that's why I have so much respect for you. And I have respect for all of you all who have the same intentions, okay? So one more time, thank you all for your prayers. We appreciate it. Brother Jackson, thank you so much for coming with us today. I keep you abreast of everything that's going on as the day progresses, all right? Thank you very much, sir. As I told you before, your wish, my command. So glad to have you. All right, and everybody else, um, it's been a plum, please, and pleasure as well as a privilege. We love y'all. Ain't nothing y'all can do about that. And remember, that stellar is a stellar. What, Brother Jackson? Duh. <laughs> Love you, Doc. <laughs> Talk to you soon. Love Thank you more. You so, so glad yes, to sir. have you. So glad to have you. God bless Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Honored to, honor to be here. God bless you. Appreciate you.